some of the problems with the organization, the, the sort of outrageous things that occur, are maybe the fact that this system operates somewhat outside of our usual social constraints and that a few sick people within it miscarry it? Is that possible? Well, uh, there's there's two important things there. Yes, it does uh, work outside our, our, our normal conception of, of our everyday life. We can't believe. I mean, you, you have no idea what goes on in Scientology, not just the belief in Xenu and all that kind of stuff. As, as I said, you know, until you've paid uh, $360,000 to them, you're not going to hear about Xenu. Uh, but, I mean, there, the, the systematic breakup of families, the fact that there's uh, essentially a prison camp inside Scientology, they have something called the Rehabilitation Project Force. Hey, Mark, hold yes. that thought. Can I can I keep you across this commercial break and you tell yep. me about that? Absolutely. Okay, that is Mark Bunker. Xenu TV is the website. He's telling us about the organization Scientology from his perspective. We'll be back with more of that and a couple of other guests after this. Uh, welcome back to Dr. Drew Live. We're having a, I hope, rational, dispassionate discussion about something that's in the news quite a bit these days, which is the Church of Scientology. I know Tom Cruise has... Uh, a lot of controversy, controversy swirled around him, obviously, and his participation in this. We were talking with Mark Bunker from Zenu TV, and now I'm welcoming Tori Chrisman. Tori? Hey, how are you? I'm great, Tori. You know, Tori is a former member of the church for 30 years. That's right. And a long we, time. And we heard you in a little snippet from Zenu TV where you were sort of, Mark was talking about, I don't know, I guess somebody died in one of the detox organizations, and you, we hear you there going, what about you? Why do, why, are you, why do you care? You were sort of trying to turn it back yeah, on him. I know. It's kind of pathetic. It's, <laughs> it's really what happens. I mean, Scientology is like a slow mind control train, right? Right. And, and by the time you get where I was, which is like next to the top, you're, you're so brainwashed. You know, you really believe, honestly, that anybody that's an enemy of the church or anybody against Scientology at all must be an enemy, and thus they must have what Hubbard called overts or bad deeds. So it's like what? What did Mark do? Do you see what I mean? Oh, so you were he asking must him do bad deeds because he's he's here criticizing us. So he must have had bad things, and if he, he would must. just expose those to you, then he'd be welcomed into the fray or something. Or oh he's, yeah, uh, for sure. Oh, interesting. But but it's like you're try there, there is that thing that Mark mentioned: always attack, never defend. So you'll always find Scientologists are out attacking, attacking, attacking wherever they are, and that's because of that policy. Are you under any kind of scrutiny from them now that you've left? Oh hell yeah, they've written thousands and thousands of pages of lies on me on the internet and followed me and my friends and you know they're they're a very weird uh, mafia-like organization as one of the judges called them they're wouldn't not it, a church but wouldn't it be more well we can talk about that in a second but wouldn't it be more in their interest just to kind of let you be yes i i left when i left i literally i had called this lady who was helping me stacy brooks and i said i'm not going to speak out i'm not going to do videos i'm not going to pick it right yeah but then they canceled my van. The vice president was at LAX following me around. They chased me across the country. They had, a, you know, 25 people at, at Tampa Airport. The police got me out of the airport, right? Wow. It was insane. And, you know, it's like I still wasn't, even then, Bob Minton said, ladies and gentlemen, this is because of the Church of Scientology. I put my hand over his mouth and said, don't say that. It's <laughs> my church, right? <laughs> right. Right? I was still, I hated Miscavige, who runs it, who's a complete jerk, but, uh, but I still felt like I was for Hubbard in the tech. I mean, since then, they've picked at me enough. I finally said, hey, I have a voice, too, and I've been speaking out ever since. Did you see something in those upper levels that they were concerned about? No. What I saw was they, ha they, they included me, and I just talked to someone who was from the RTC, which is the very, very top thing, that they work with Miscavige, and she's out now, and she said, you know, they said to me, you were doing this Office of Special Affairs, which is their PR slash legal group, and really dirty tricks. You were doing this program, and it flipped. You know, it's like it, it reversed. It didn't work, and that's why you're out. And that's kind of true. I mean, they had me in this top-secret mafia opening up phony accounts. That's why you say paranoia you're against. But I can give you many, many examples of things I was part of that were really dirty tricks, but you don't know it. You, you, what do you mean? Oh, you as somebody inside doing, perpetrating these things? Well, I was out opening up phony accounts, but I trusted my auditor. He said, Tori, I would never do anything illegal. And it really isn't illegal, but it's immoral. Do you see what I mean? They were opening, I was opening up phony accounts. He wouldn't tell me what for. 
I, this is why I woke up. I finally went and looked on the Internet, and they have all the Scientologists terrified so they won't look on the Internet because all these evil people are on there, right? And you'll, you'll be infected by them or something? Yeah, exactly. And so they, they won't look. But I finally thought, I grew up in Chicago, and I thought, these guys are starting to act like the mafia, right? I better look at what I'm doing. And I went on this news group, and there were, they had all these baking recipes. Like, you, let's say you're a, uh, an ex-Scientologist, and you're saying Scientology sucks, right? Right. And they'd have, they'd change your words to, this is how you bake brownies. And, you know, they had all these baking recipes, because their view was if you could drive some hard, hot topics down off the first page, no one read the second page. Oh, interesting. Now, there, were, there was a couple, there was a report in Vanity Fair about a couple, Teresa Duncan and Jeremy Blake, that became, sound like, acutely paranoid about Scientology and, and ended up killing themselves. Are you aware of that story? Vaguely, I, and I didn't know them, so I'm, I don't really want to speak about it because I don't have... Uh, to me, that just, I, I just seems to people with mental illness that started becoming paranoid about Scientology. I mean, I, I, they no, would... no, they, Scientology drives people insane. That, that is true. And I mean, I'm not paranoid. I've watched people kill themselves. Uh, my, my son, well, you know, a dear, dear friend of mine shot himself to death. Uh, one of my family, a family I knew, their son hung himself. But these are guys that left Scientology. No, and... no, they didn't leave Scientology. Oh, those people left Scientology? Well, no, I'm imagining. They have all the mind control in their head. But, but again, these are, not mental, these are not mental health professionals. These are people that are vulnerable to these kinds of cults already, and so they might have some mental illness that goes unchecked and unnoticed, and for you some know, reason they're you, exacerbated they by the experience. I'm going to tell you this. I've spoken with academics who study cults, yeah. and they've said over and over, that what you just said is not true. Not that there aren't some people with mental illness, but cults by their very nature are very isolating. They yes. cut off your family, your friends. And they, often people in cults are very smart people. They are looking for something higher than regular life, right? Yeah, but oftentimes... This is what the academics have said. Yeah, in my experience, there's so a there's deep... people that were in the wrong place at the wrong there, time. That can certainly happen, but in my experience, it's also people who feel deeply empty because of deficient... That's not true. Def, well, in my experience, so, well, okay, uh, you were there. I mean, I'll take your word for it. I'm just telling you, I know a lot of people who got in who had very rich lives, you know, doctors, dentists, all kinds of things, who they suck in, and they think, oh, okay, yeah, I can double my income, I'll join. Phone number is 888-373-9502. We also have joining us Gareth Kales. Gareth? Yes, how are you? Hey, you hear Tori? Yeah. You've been uh, hearing? Okay. Exactly. And Gareth, you're with you the, doing, you were at the organization Anonymous, is that right? Okay, and that's a group that has been protesting Scientology, correct? Yes, we've been protesting for about three months now. And wh why? What, where did you guys come from? Well, Anonymous started on the Internet. Um, there are a number of websites that are involved with us, and at one point the church decided to censor a video that went up with Tom Cruise, and that sparked our interest. Where, where did that come from? Where did that, who, who released those videos? Uh, I have no idea where the video came Tori, from. Tori, do you know where those are coming from? I don't. They were just leaked out. Is there somebody know. inside that's sort of trying to do harm to the church, do you think? Uh, I don't really know. I think probably somebody who, you know, wants some... You know, the, the top executives in Scientology are locked in a room. Someone left the top part that where they are, and they've been locked in a room since 2000. So some people obviously have a message to get out. Okay. And our experience with it so far is that there are people on the inside that are egging to get information out. Like, they can't leave, but they want to do enough... Um, they want to do enough to make it so that the church starts to go downhill so that it'll be easier for them to get out later down the road. Okay, guys, I'm going to ask you to hold on a second, can you? And we're going to take, we're take a great break. And, Garrett, then I want you to tell me what Anonymous is, where it came from, why do you care? Because I, I understand why Tori cares. She was in there, and she still seems pretty even and dispassionate about this. You're going on with your life, right, Tori? I have. Yeah. You know, I lost all my friends and my husband of 27 years, right, we'll, so, we'll... you know, I have some passion about it. Okay. All right, we'll talk more about that after this commercial break. Dr. Drew Live, we've been having a conversation about groups that have been protesting the Scientology Church, or the Church of Scientology. Some people put that in quotations. We've been talking to Terry Chrisman. She was a former member of the church for 30 years and then left and has had multiple losses as a result, she says. And also Gareth Kales is with an organization called Anonymous. And as I've told you guys, I, paranoia makes me unhappy, and uh, Scientology is an object of paranoia many times. Cults make me unhappy, and so, you know, I worry about people getting caught in cults. Let me ask about Anonymous. Where did they come from, Gareth, and who are they? Why do you care? 
Anonymous, like I said before, was made, it's made up of a number of websites on the yeah. Internet. Previously, we've just done simple things like go after pedophiles, turn them into the authorities, that sort of thing. But recently, in January, the church...